Hello again, and welcome to the master's voice. I am celestial and you are welcome to this channel to old and new subscribers alike. You are very welcome. This video is being premiered on all channels at once because I am in the process of finishing all the prophecies that I have not yet covered. So, um, since 2020, August, 2020 is when I've had the video channel and I've been working through the videos by theme. So the Lord will give me a theme and then I'll go to the blog and extract at least 10 or more prophecies in that theme. I've been working through, through them. I call them series. So there's the America series. There's the sin series. There's a supernatural series. And that is in three parts. There's one for angels. There's one for Nephilim. There's one for giants. There is the Russia and China series, which is pivotal to this blog. And then the Lord took me into a very difficult and troubling season this year. June, July, August, and September have been some of the most difficult months on record because the Lord began to hit very hard against a particular type of sexual sin. God has been speaking about sexual immorality since I started people who are still having masturbation as a part of their lives, people who still feel free to break their marriage vows and have affairs, commit adultery against the spouse and things like that. People fornicating. This is that you are not married. You are not in a recognized marriage relationship and yet you are out having multiple sexual partners. This is not acceptable before the Lord. But in these months past, the Lord began to put his finger on this high offense called homosexuality. This thing, it is only a debate out there in the greater fields of America and New York and things like that. In the real world, which is the world that exists around Yah, God, there is no debate. And so the Lord began to give me titles like a man is not a woman. And he began to exp um, expand to me in very disturbing dreams and even more disturbing downloads of what the future will be like when we push back the boundaries and start allowing all sorts of things. God began to open up what exactly happens when a society says that the natural order of things is not acceptable because the natural order is too exclusivist and it's not accepting and it's not diverse enough. Is it possible for us to mistake license for freedom? License is when you just want to do anything and everything, whenever, whatever, with no limits. But freedom is not like that. Freedom is given to us in God. That is, God has established boundaries. God has established rules. And the reason he has done that is because he is the only person that we found living when we got here. He is the only one that has no beginning and no end. And therefore he has full prerogative, since this is also the world that he made, to say what his expectations for the world that he made should be and how the world that he made is to be operated, stewarded because humanity is here as a guest. Yes, it was made for us, but we are stewards of what has been given to us, how it should be operated, how it should be stewarded and the condition that he was expecting to get it back in, which of course he won't be getting it back in that condition. And that is why as um, Apostle Peter said, the earth and everything that is in it is reserved for fire. That means that the end of everything that we hold dear, everything that comprises our world is going to be consumed by fire that the Lord will send in the final times. And so God was taking a very pointed look at homosexuality, lesbianism, trans, um, the fact that people hide their sexuality nowadays because it's definitely gained a ton of momentum, but it's still not widely accepted in a lot of places. It is still criminalized in a lot of places, homosexuality and, and having a transgender life. But here in America, um, as I have covered in multiple prophecies over the last few years, America is, America is fu fulfilling her role in the Bible 
And I think that this is something that Christians that live here struggle with. They ask questions that display that they don't have an understanding of what prophecy actually is. Some prophecy is conditional, meaning that if you do certain things, you can change it. If you repent in a certain way, you can change it. Some prophecy is just objective. It's observational. It is something that is already decreed. It is something that is going to happen. You can't change it. And one of the most immutable prophecies, one of the most forever will never change prophecies is Revelation 18. Nothing in the book of Revelation is changing. Not a single sentence in that book is going to fail. In fact, God values that book so highly that the book opens up by saying that you will get a blessing just for reading it. There are a ton of people who have never gotten that blessing because they've never cracked that book because they have been told that it's not relevant because the church will not be here for anything that's happening in there. And so there is that. But Revelation 18, as long as God is God, Revelation 18 is not going anywhere. And Revelation 18 is talking about the utter demolition and destruction and annihilation of a certain nation, a certain end times player called Mystery Babylon. And so all the things that we are seeing now is America living up to her role in this end times movie. And therefore it behooves Christians if you want to enjoy some measure of rest, if you want to enjoy some measure of peace, if you want to exit that thumping heart lifestyle and come into the meadow where God can comfort you, one of the first things that you will have to understand is that when people are fulfilling prophetic destiny, there is nothing that you can do about it absolutely nothing. You can pray, you can fast, you can talk to them. You will be dealing with brass, iron, metal rods in their spirit, in their ears, in their minds, and nothing will change that. So when I ask the Lord, what is your heart in this prophecy? Today's message is about transsexuals for that is what God calls them. He does not call them transgender God is not part of the gender debate. God speaks in terms of sexuality, and there are just two sexes, the male and the female. Gender is another construct because once you create a second ante room to an existing room, then you can go in that room and try to manipulate reality. You won't succeed, but I did say try, and trying itself is a process that brings about results. So in this prophecy, God was not talking about people who are in homosexual lifestyles, even though many transsexuals are. He was talking about the fact that a man can never be a woman. And this statement has appeared in many of the prophecies about hybridism. He always talks about the, the desire that will hit this nation in particular for people to become asexual. They will say that they're asexual, and some do say that they're asexual now, but they will prove it to us by cutting off their genitalia. People are going to relieve themselves of every external sign that makes them male or makes them female. They're going to hack at this body until the body has no choice but to expire because unknown to them who have never created a body before, every single piece on us matters. And the unfortunate among us who suffer damage to their pieces are witnesses to how difficult and different life is when any piece stops functioning. But as you may have heard in a previous prophecy, God says that this particular subset of people, men sleeping with men, women sleeping with women, people of bestial preferences, you want to sleep with animals as if they look like a fitting partner for a human being that God made, and transsexual men crossing the boundary to live and act and claim that they are women, women crossing the boundary to live and act and claim that they are men. The Lord says that the end the root of all this is pride, pride. It is the reprobate mind that you can find in the book of Romans chapter one from about verses 18 
all the way down when it's listing the sin. But from verse 18, it, start to, it starts to describe a certain type of person. And that is the person who will not honor God in their mind. So you hear the word of God and then you have caveats, you have exit ramps, you have extra doors. You want to know, but yes, but what about? So um, on that second platform that's here, you lose access to this. You distance yourself from this over time. And then because this is all life, this word of God, this is where all benefit rests. This is where all truth is held. Why? Because God said that he will preserve his words from this generation eternally. And I taught on that and I said the meaning of that scripture means that whatever generation hears, God says, I will preserve my words from you eternally. He means that my words are encased in a place so high, so distant, so great, so perfect, so flawless, that even if you throw rocks at it all day long, my words are immortal. It is you that will die in your hubris, your pride, and my words will continue on for another generation who may accept them or reject them just as you did, but it, it will stay as it is forever. So this pride is going to hurt people. And God was just showing me different ways that people in homosexuality, long-term homosexuality, God says, if you don't come out, your family will bury you. He says, we are in the time of dual pain. The one who is passing away, will be feeling the pain of life cut short. The family who tolerated this, the family who, especially those families that supported these little children to get blockers and stunted growth and start transitioning them at age five and all kinds of things, dressing them wrongly, fostering and encouraging this mindset that is coming from somewhere. In the very young, it is not coming from pride. It is always, almost always coming from a very early access into sexuality of these little ones. Someone has touched them. Someone has abused them. Someone has molested them. And that creates soul wounds through which these iron plated princes of homosexuality and gender confusion, as it is called, enter in. They nest in the child the same way these weevils nest in corn. And then when the child begins to grow up and show awareness, these things begin to show themselves. And this is why so many people adhere to the born this way doctrine. I have no idea who's going to find this video. You find this video, you may get offended. You may be about to click off. No, my brother wasn't mistaken. He's been like that since he were two. Do you exist in the spiritual realm to know what happens even to children in vitro? Do you know that some of these children that are born with severe self-esteem issues, children who just never speak is because if you look further up the chain, when that living person was in the womb, the father was abusing the mother and telling her, I don't want this child. I do not want this child. I want you to get rid of it. And these words that were spoken create what is called spiritual rejection. And that passes into that child as sure as DNA also passes into the child. There is an entire higher world of spiritual things that the majority of people have no clue about. God has never opened it to them. Their relationship with God is as shallow as you want. And so he cannot come to them and teach them higher things. And so of course, at their level, they will say, it is not so. My brother was like this since he was two. You have no idea what these iron plated demons can do even to the unborn. And I will just leave it at that. Today's prophecy is a man can never be a woman. August the 5th, 2022. The scripture is this, Deuteronomy 22 and 5. A woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. And I dreamt that morning on the 5th of August about transsexuals. And this is what God was calling them in the dream. So this dream, as I remember it, had no direct conversation. Nobody was talking to the other person or anything like that. 
Everything was being communicated by very strong and obvious action and also by the Lord just downloading information in my heart as I was dreaming. You can have a lot of awareness in dreams and just get a lot of understanding from God piloting you through the dream like an NPC. So that was the name that these men were called in that time. They were not called transgender. They were called transsexuals. And I was walking in New York City in Midtown about West west 45th to west 51st that's where rockefeller center is radio city music hall lots of fountains nice banks you know everything is there restaurants and theater and i was walking along a part of the theater district and there was a lot of men in very disturbing flesh colored body leotards. These men were not wearing clothing. Each man was wearing a body leotard. So just imagine if this was exactly my skin tone of almost sheer material, but thank God, not fully sheer. And as you walk by, they literally appeared naked. So these men appeared as if they had no covering whatsoever. And they were ranged across the sidewalk. So quite a lot of men of all races, some of them jutting out. If it's a line, like just think of a chorus line, some of them quite tall and some of them quite short and some of them quite slender and some of them quite broad of all imaginable races. And the Lord was telling me, these men are involved in the transsexual lifestyle. And I will go into how God was showing it. So these men were in various kinds of yoga poses. They were, they were, you know, before a ballet troupe actually goes to do the performance, they stretch and they bend and they gesture and they bend down to their toes and they go through the various moves. And these men were making all these effeminate gestures. And as I was walking by, they, some of them were looking at me with open hatred. Some of them were looking at me with great hatred. And some of them were looking at me with very sad eyes. They were looking at me with extremely sad eyes. And some of them were showing off. So they were, they were like, oh, and they were bending and they were doing and their general attitude. And then it would turn back to give me this look that they call fierce. Fierce is this word in the culture as if to say, well, look at this celestial. Can't you see I'm a woman? Only a woman can do this. And so that's what they were doing. And uh, God was taking me back to the old, old days and telling me, you know, Celestial, it's this modern thing now that transsexual, transgender means going to have things like chemical castration, uh, physically castrating yourself, needing to see a shrink because you, you do things to this physical form that take you through terrible psychological problems, terrible psychosis in some cases, serious depression. You have got, you just switch off your hormone tap like that. You just tell that testosterone that has strengthened your bone and made you have these broad hands, that thick neck, you just switch that thing off like a lot of grown adults are doing now. People are 20 and 30. I have seen 60 year old married men with about 35 years of marriage under their belt hit the New York news professors. Some of them, one of them is a very famous inventor who decided he wasn't even in midlife. He was in third trimester life, decided that he wasn't a woman anymore and his wife supported him. And so you just switch off the hormones like that. You just switch off everything that God made and then say, I'm going to open now this new synthetic tap. I'm going to pour in a couple of drugs and a couple of breast implants and a couple of castrations and a couple of this and a couple of leg lengthening surgeries because I want to be lithe. And then you really think that the reward of this physical form will be okay. I'm on board. It doesn't work like that. God was saying that this modern thing of basically destroying the edifice that is a man, cutting and hacking at the feminine form. He said that this thing called trance never required that. And I began to see the old times that a trance was just 
an extremely skillful cross-dresser, and this was something that was almost exclusively done by men. Being a trans was a man who had a burning desire to be female, and he was willing to do whatever it took to achieve that goal, but they used sleight of hand and deception. They did not actually harm the male structure. That is one. And the second thing that God showed me is that no matter how much lipstick and makeup those men wore, they never, ever thought that they were women. They never claimed to be women. They knew and accepted that they were men. What they were trying to do was find a way to live with the internal struggle that kept telling them that they were female. And that is a whole different universe from what we see now. Six foot nine linebackers in these tiny micro shorts here in New York City. You see them, they look like two tree trunks sitting together in a tiny banana banana skin in summer and saying, oh, hey, sister, I feel you literally claiming to be born from the womb women. This is not a crisis of subterfuge as transsexualism used to be. Subterfuge is simply cleverly using tricks to hide the original form of something. This is not a crisis of men using subterfuge. This is a crisis of actual psychosis. America, you are watching the fulfillment of Romans chapter one, where it says, God handed them over to the reprobate mind, which is a mind that can't come back. It is very hard to chop off everything and to spritz everything and shut it off and then admit, I was wrong. I want to go back. You cannot go back when you take certain steps. The same way we can't bring back the dead unless the Lord involves himself by his supernatural power. You can't cut things off and put things back. It doesn't work. And these butchers taking the money of male and female to carve up flesh, may they get their full and just desserts from the judge, Jesus Christ. The Lord says, originally a specific lifestyle that was done extremely carefully, skillful and dedicated camouflage so that you couldn't detect it from the real thing. And he says that both women and men used to do this. There are women in history who dressed as men, lived as men, and nobody knew until the day the undertaker was undressing Mr. Mortimer's body and saw that underneath his binder, he had breasts. So throughout history, men and women have done this, but God said in those days, you had to have this, it was almost like a calling. And he said that the ones who perfected the art form of appearing female, I mean, fooling the eye, I mean, even fooling the opposite sex up close who used to get into relationships with them. God says that those people were treated almost as gods. So if Miss Jaja, only in the trans community was known to be a man, but everywhere else at her job, everywhere else, people thought that she was a woman. She was seen as a top level guru in this art of camouflage. And the Lord said that to make this thing work, he was telling me this. I did not know these things. He said, you had to move away from your family. That was the first painful sacrifice. I was not going to make this prophecy, but the Lord said, make this prophecy because it speaks directly to your times. And when you make this prophecy, tell them that my heart in this matter is that I am grieved when people despise my laws to consistently follow their own way. He said to me, Celestial, the heart in every prophecy I have given you is my grief and anger because my way is despised as mankind has followed their own way. So the first sacrifice that you made with this thing is that you had to leave family. You couldn't live at home because most people were strong Bible believers in those days and this was just not tolerated. God said that many people got on buses and they left the towns and the people who originally knew them. You changed your hair, you grew it out, you styled it different. 
you got wigs, you got um, implants, whatever you had to do. And he said you would even change your eye color. You did as much with the physical appearance to look different. Then came the clothing. You spent a lot of time experimenting privately with makeup, different looks, with clothing, different fits. Because you're not a woman and you had to get a feel for it. So people would go all the way out of their neighborhood, all the way out of town, and say that they were doing shopping for their wife. And then they, he, when asked, well, what's your wife's size? They would say, oh, you know, she's a little bit of a big girl. Because if you're 6'5", you're not shopping from anywhere. I'm shopping. So they would take them to those sections. And then they would act as if they were shopping for grandmothers and mothers and other family. And then the age of being able to have parcels delivered to the door came in and you could finally shop online in peace, get your makeup and not have it to explain to anyone why you were buying so many different shades and why you were trying them on your hand instead of bringing your sister or your wife with you. God said it was a time where these people strove to find others like them because this was a massive secret. And you can only imagine the loneliness that went along with this life. As he was explaining this to me, I was understanding the sadness in the eyes of some of the men I was passing by. They looked so pained because he says, you're alone you're hiding the biggest secret of your life. You're looking for maybe even one person that you can trust with this who won't reject you. And you're just trying to make sense of it all because you are finding it a very hard job to be a woman. And so I was seeing the different types of men, broad shoulders, slim shoulders. And what God was showing me is that the kind of man that has a body that can get away with it is the most successful transsexual. So the man who is naturally in build, in facial structure, in not growing a lot of facial hair, in not having a very pronounced neck or Adam's apple, a man who has narrower shoulders than usual is the man who is in those days, and even now, still among the most successful transsexuals, that man is going to be the top level shapeshifter because he can move seamlessly between his maleness and the female avatar, so to speak. And so as I'm walking past these men, um, nobody was speaking to me. There was just all this weird energy and some of them were like, like they wanted me to go. It was just a clash of worlds, even though nobody was speaking. And um, the Lord zoned in on the fact that these men all still had their bottom intact. They had not had any kind of breast. These men that he was showing me in Midtown, they had not had any kind of breast done. And all of them were doing this thing that is called tucking. Tucking is what it is called. And so as I was walking past these men at first appearance, they had the appearance of women downstairs, but then after a while you see, and because he was showing me in the old style, God was showing that you see in the old days, this thing was the art form. The one who could do it best and wear flat pants and everything, as I said, was the guru. And he said that in those days, you didn't have to go to such drastic lengths to be a transsexual, all you had to do was be excellent at this skill that I just mentioned, and then you could live your cross-dressed life. And when Thanksgiving and other big holidays like the 4th of July come around where everybody goes home, you could dress up like a man and go see your family, and you wouldn't have that kind of difficulty. And I just saw that um, this type of zero visibility life that they were looking for, zero male visibility downstairs, that uh, you can go and read the prophecy for yourself. God was just showing me that this has a bad and a detrimental effect on male private parts after a while. You keep doing that. You keep doing that part of your body, bending it unnaturally and doing all kinds of things to it that were not intended. After a while, it just, it just began to die off. This is what God was showing me. And I, he just 
replace those men with the Roman statues. And you know how the Roman statues are. They're like 50 foot tall, and then you know how they are in the front. So that is all I would say. And what came to me when I saw that is the penalty of error in the body. And what the Lord was putting in my heart is that any time, any time we abuse this temple, this thing I'm touching here, I'm hitting it for emphasis. It's a gift to you. You did nothing to deserve it. It is a great gift to you from someone that you've never seen face to face who loves you the way he he loves Jesus. He loves you the way he loves Jesus. He was willing to trade Jesus for your life and to protect this thing from hellfire. He says, anytime you use this body for any purpose, you put substances into this body, you take this body and start working it through the crowd sexually. You start masturbating this body. You expose this body to images in the eyes, conversation that goes into the ear that poisons your inner well and distracts you from the job that we all have to let the Holy Spirit make us in the image of God. He said, any time this body is subjected to anything, sleeping with a man when you're a man, sleeping with a child when children are not to be touched, you cause such spiritual damage. And God said, there will always be repercussions that you did not expect. Always. You put feminine hormones in this body, you're a man. Male hormones in this body when you're a woman. God says you can forever expect unintended consequences and they will never be positive. And then the next thing I saw in this dream was a website. It's a transsexual website, a chat forum, forum. And the amount of mail that was flying on that forum, I have to tell you, I was surprised. This was now the age of the internet. It have massive, massive traffic moving, notifications coming in, ping, ping, sing, sing. And a hand was scrolling the website for me to read through the pages and pages and pages of postings. An unbelievable amount of men gathered on this one website, which means by now there are thousands and thousands of this site. And here are some of the questions that I saw and I wrote down from this dream. Hi, I am new to this. Can anybody help me? Another person said, my breasts keep slipping when I walk. What should I do? Somebody said, welcome to the messenger board. Please remember to be respectful and no asking for hookups or sex. I am the administrator and if you do this, you will be removed. Another person said, Where, where's the best hair? Where are the best wigs? Another person said, my shoes hurt. What should I do? Another person said, I can't tell my parents. Another person said, I can't tell my wife. A third person said, why do I do this? And the last person that I remembered said, I can't do this. I have a family. And so messages like this were flying back and forth. And God said to me, there are more men in this gay life and trans life than the normal person can ever understand. And this is what I alluded to in the beginning, that the middle months of this year, this year, they challenged me. They challenged me because the Lord took me into, I won't even call it the underbelly, I would just say the upper to medium depths of how many people are hiding their sexuality in this country and around the world. I was stunned. I was stunned into silence. I was stunned into grappling with the difficult reality that there is homosexuality in the church. You might look at me and think, what is she? Yes, I look right back at you. I can remember just one major scandal in my lifetime, and we all know who that is and how it went, how it rocked that man's church and how he eventually lost his life at the end of it dying in denial that it was not true. But for God to come and peel back this reality and say, do you actually know how many of these pastors are dressing up feminine when they are home? How many businessmen in America? The Lord showed me this vision. It's in one of these videos, the difficult videos on the sodomy ritual where um, a woman 
very wealthy, nothing lacking, decided just to drop in to her husband who was working at this top, top place. This man was the CEO of something majorly successful. She decided, you know what? I'm just going to drop in and see if he's available for lunch or just give him a kiss on the cheek and tell him I'll be home for dinner. And this socialite wife dropped in and um, didn't the secretary in the front either didn't see her or wasn't able to stop her in time. And she moved down the hallway and came to find the door cracked to find her husband with a man. And the man never saw her because they were in the act. She saw it through the door and she stepped back and she walked away. And the Lord was telling me, I bet you think that it would end that she'd leave him. The Lord said, these women don't leave. It's devastating to them. It is devastating to a woman to marry a man only to find that the man wanted to marry your brother. Same thing the other way around. But he said that a lot of people make trade-offs in this life, Celestial. And so I was learning these things, eating like an obedient sheep from the hand of my father who feeds me the kind of grass that many people fight against because they feel that Christianity is some sanitized tide pod where the bad things never happen or the bad things do happen, but we should keep the details cloudy to preserve the peace of mind of the sheep. Well, I venture respectfully that the sheep's peace of mind is the reason the church is a mess in the first place. So there are more men in the gay and trans life than a normal person can ever understand. The Lord said, if the depth of this life were to be uncovered to America, the ordinary person would faint. He said, we would scream and we would not believe it. And I've certainly seen that kind of response when I'm talking about these things. He said, it is their father, brother, husband, boyfriend, boss, best friend, who is on chat boards like this one and millions of others like it. They are on those chat boards for fun, to alleviate loneliness, to secretly express themselves. They're there for relief. They're there to get a sense of family. They are there for a sense of belonging. They are there to perfect their knowledge on how to create a whole new identity as a woman. I hope you now understand what God was talking about centuries ago in Deuteronomy 22, that a man should not put on what pertains to a woman. He's not talking about britches on a female or just hair on a male. This is rejecting the Adamic identity to take on Eve-likeness and rejecting Eve-ness to take on the Adamic nature. And now Satan, that serpent that comes in like a little tendril and that tendril strengthens to a vine and then the vine becomes a strong root and that root goes around the neck and begins to lift up those who do these things. Never think that the end of it's just this one time. It's just a little bit. I'm just curious. There are people in their graves that curiosity took them there. Somebody passed them a little something mixed with something. Everybody else had taken two puffs. They took their first and went plain out of their mind. They took their puff. And right after that came emergency rescue services, cardiac arrest, inability to resuscitate, and a family left devastated going, I need you four to tell me what happened here. That's the only closure some people can get. Gathering up the other four who weren't harmed and telling them some better, somebody better start talking. What happened to my kid? We don't know. We don't know, Mrs. Johnson. It was just a little this and that. Guess what? That fifth person had no tolerance for a little curiosity. A little let's see what happens next. It is so dangerous when we don't perfect obedience in the things of God. And then we think, because this is the cancer in the church today, we think our little relationship with Jesus is so strong that, you know, it'll weather anything. I look at people and I just, I just marvel. Christianity is open to all. It is a group sport, and at the same time, yes, it is intensely personal, but whoever falls into that pit of thinking, no, it's just me and my Jesus, who's going to come into that bubble to perfect all the gaps that you're unable to download from your Jesus? Don't you know 
that you are at the mercy of everything he hasn't told you that yet because you don't have the ability to download it for yourself and we're running out of time and that's why he has places for you to learn it? Many don't know that. They're perishing because their cup is full. And nothing is more perishing than coming to the place where you think that the infrastructure you were given at birth is faulty, flawed, and all you're doing is working with the doctors and working with these butchers of death to push these pills and these transplants and these surgeries until you are left with an edifice that is failing, falling, corrupted, and striking you back for pride. God says that people should repent because the rot inside America is great. The whole thing is rotten. Let me read. The whole head of the nation is sick and her body putrid. Putrid means that you're not just rotten, but you are giving off a stink, a great stink. And that's why I will destroy it. That's why I will destroy it. Because America is rotten. And she is like these transsexuals. For a long time, this country excelled in hiding the rot, but now she can't anymore. Many people are disturbed and they're wondering, where's this rise of sin coming from? This sin was always there. It's just that social media and also the internet kept the sin in the homes. These men have always been keeping these children in the basement and raping them, dear Christians. They've always been touching their daughters and their sons. The only reason it seems to be an explosion, yes, there is an increase in spiritual wickedness. The devil is def definitely amping up his available staff. But at the same time, the rot is being exposed because now knowledge has increased. And with it, the unfortunate fact that when you go online these days, half the postings are about missing people, people found with parts chopped off. People saying that they're in love with their father and that they're not leaving him so their mother better get used to it. The Lord said that these websites have bankers on them, high-powered executives, moguls from every walk of life. He said people who are running companies that control this world. We are talking about these massive conglomerates here in America. He said at the top, the wind is blowing the other way for a lot of these men and women. They're on there, he said, looking for advice on how to wear heels. And he said, because these sites are anonymous, that's why these people feel brave to share. Because you can just sign yourself up as rubber ducky one, two, three, and ask anything you want. And nobody's going to trace it back to that highly protected server sitting right in the middle of Manhattan and know that the CEO of that company actually likes to wear brassieres. He said there's ordinary people on these websites too. They are teenagers that are aching to be accepted, but they can never confess to the football team just how much they enjoy being in the locker room with the guys when they're all naked and about to take a shower. He said even caregivers who molest their patients because the patients are weak or sometimes the patient can't move and they're trusting you to wash that person Family is trusting you to care for that person. God says that all these people are in the gay life, the download life. Gay means open about it. Download means definitely in it or seeking to be in it, but hiding it. And trans, meaning you're not even trying to be kind with kind. You're basically crossing over to the other sex and saying, no, I'm not even with you men who want men. I'm a, I'm a whole woman. This is America's face now. This is America's agenda. This is America's mission. There is a reason that the Lord brought that other prophecy called the hermaphrodite army. What do armies do, Christians? They go to war. Why do you think that many of you feel as if you are fainting in the face of an onslaught? Because an army is coming at you. And guess where that army arose from? Your own homes. These are your children. These are your sister's children. And she's so torn between telling them the Bible truth and trying to be their friend that she's opting to fight you and tell you that you're being harsh, you're being judgmental, and she didn't ask you for an advice. You raise your kids, I'll raise mine. She's so hurt. But her mistake is that she thinks that pain 
trumps Jesus. She really does. She thinks that the pain that she's in is greater than falling on her knees and confessing to Jesus, I missed it. I'm about to lose this kid, help me. She's choosing the kid over the Lord. And how can he reward her for that? How can he commend her for that? She's already in sin. And that sin can be found in Romans chapter 1 and verse 32. And that is how I'm going to end this video. Just a moment, please. Romans chapter 1 and verse 32. From, a, from verse 18 to verse 31, it lists a lot of sin. Being filled with unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, being full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-minded, haters of God, backbiters, gossips, proud, boasters, disobedient to parents, those who invent evil things. And then it finally comes down after saying being undiscerning is a sin. Being untrustworthy is a sin. Being unloving is a sin. Refusing to forgive and having no mercy. Here is the final group that I have warned a hundred times. Do not be found in this group. Don't get to heaven and skip all the other sin. And then Jesus tells you, well, uh, you are one who sympathizes with sin. You are one who imagined yourself on earth to be more merciful than me. See, I knew what these people were struggling with. I knew that the, the root in many of these people's lives was molestation, abuse, neglect. But what I never expected is for you to still see something palpably wrong and then pin that little pride flag or the new blue and pink one and say, no, I support this. Proud supporter of this. You skip all the other sins that you could have committed and then you end up in the judgment of God for someone else's sin. Now that's a bitter pill to lose heaven, not because of a direct act of your own, but to lose it because the, the act that you chose was to support someone else's direct act. That's bitter. Verse 32, those who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things, what things, all the things that I've just listed before this, Knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death, they not only do the same, but they also approve of those who practice them. So right in that scripture is two groups. You know that there are things that God must righteously judge. God must righteously judge anybody who cuts up themselves like beef jerky because they feel, no, I just need to get these off and... and, and the chest pumpers and I need to do this and I need to cut something off and put it aside for me because I don't feel right. And then you know that God will judge that and you decide I'm getting into that life anyway. These are people given over to the reprobate mind, just like the people in verse 18 who are male with male and female with female burning in their lust for one another. But this final person here in verse 32, once the Lord opened this thing up to me many years ago, I made certain promises in my heart and praise his name. It's been a long time. I'm still keeping that. You can go to hell for sin, but to go to hell because you support other persons, somebody else's sin, you're majorly, majorly wanting to go to hell if you do that. The people who know that God must righteously judge unrighteousness, but decide during their lifetime that they will support it visibly by changing their Facebook profile in June and by showing up at the support groups and saying, I'm here to learn how to care for my daughter. She's eight and she's transitioning. And I just want to be more aware of her diverse needs. And you're out here giving these interviews on these channels and things like that. And you can't stand for truth because we are in an age where everybody wants to be liked. Everybody needs affirmation now in the church. You need a whole empowerment group to do the right thing.
It is a bitter thing. He says that the whole thing is sick. Thing, America, the whole box, the whole bunch, the whole thing, the entity, it is sick. And that is why he keeps sending me video after video to say the end of a thing that is sick and then stubborn and refuses the treatment and rejects the medicine and spits on the truth. The end of that thing is to perish of its malady, to pass away of its illness. It is already rotten within and I would cut out the rot to save to save the thing, but the thing does not want to be saved. And therefore, I will simply destroy it. This is Celestial with the Master's Voice. Please go to the blog and read every prophecy. There are things that the Lord will bring forth in a video that are not exactly written down. Those things are just the spiritual impetus coming out as I am bringing the prophecy. As I'm speaking, the Spirit of God will be moving and just giving edification, giving rebuke, because we need to change. If there's any person who's been watching these videos, you watch two videos and you still think that you're in right standing and you still think that once you repented long ago, God was even saying to me before I, I made this video, he says, isn't it astounding that they understand they need to take a bath every day in order to remain clean? This is the natural order. This is real life. You shower every day, but then they think that a, repentance can only be applied once in a while for the big stuff. If people understood how many of their sins are upon them. May the Lord have mercy on his church. I'm Celestial. This is the master's voice. The website for all these prophecies is www.the-masters-voice.com. You go to the blog. There's a menu at the top in blue. I've done my best with that menu, but in weeks to come when I have more free time, I will be streamlining it. The prophecies are grouped by theme, so you will find the fallen ones, you'll find prophecies on war, Russia and China, sin series, that kind of thing. At the bottom of the blog, this means on any page that you are, when you scroll past all the writing, you come to a blue field. You'll find on one side, it says archives, starting from May 2019, all the way to where we are now, November 2022. If you have the time and you are so inclined, you can start at that very low one and simply begin to read the posts at your own leisure. Some people have chosen to do it in video form. They've simply gone back to my introduction. They said that God told them to do this and bless them who have decided to invest their time in this way. You can easily play these videos as you're doing something else. The point is not to stare at my face. The point is to simply listen, be challenged, be edified, be informed, be taught, repent, and ultimately change, not by my hand, but by the spiritual changes that the Holy Spirit himself is working in the hearts of many people. And may God honor those people who have decided that their lives and their time is worth it. May God give you back in full every single piece of time that you sowed in the field of your own life. Because I'm here with the messages. I'm here with the messages. The grid goes down tomorrow. They are all here with me in my heart. Precious seeds, each one. And also written down in my journal. They're here with me. So whatever you are doing out there, you are plucking to plant in your own field that a similar crop of preparation will grow for you and your family. And I am telling you from the bottom of my heart, let Jesus bless and honor you for that. Because it means that my labor was not spoiled on the vine. Thank you for being with me. And until I see you again, Celestial with the master's voice. Goodbye.